Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian DC Benny in here. We discussed how much time should you spend with your mate, what it's like for your dad to date a younger woman, Kanye West. At uh, 34 minutes, we talk about Kanye West. There you go. And uh, tone Don't police. Policing. That's right. This is interesting. Yeah, and also, guys, we uh, we continue the show. That's the first show. But on Patreon, we do bonus content. So join us on patreon.com slash manschool202 because we continue our conversation with DC Benny. We're talking about uh, spotting pathological liars. Uh, we talk about political correctness and comedy, being understanding, and a lot, lot more. So we're always doing bonus content. Patreon.com slash Manschool202 because uh, it helps us keep the show going. So thank you. And uh, we do listener mail from time to time. Join us over at Patreon.com. Enjoy the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolution in podcast? Then then I am excited. Now, I know I've said that uh, 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Uh, We got a special guest, uh, but first and foremost, what's going on, Harry? You ready to rock and roll? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know me. I was born ready to rock and roll. That's what the doctors said. They're like, this kid, this kid looks like he was born ready. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, I want to get into my guest today. He's been on the show a couple of times. He looks looks like he's in the trucker convoy right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> looks as deceiving. Brooklyn's own. Uh, good friend of mine. Funny dude. Been on Comedy Central. All kinds of stuff. Uh, give it up for my boy DC Benny. Oh, DC yeah. Benny. Give it up. Hey, man. It's good to be here. Good same, to be same. Here, gentlemen. You know? How you holding up, brother? I, we haven't, I, we haven't really spoke in a minute. I know you've been doing, you've been doing West Side a little bit, right? Uh, uh, what do you call? It? What have I been doing? He's still a little bit. The, the in little Brooklyn. Bit. In Brooklyn. Yeah, a little bit. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, doing a lot of real estate stuff, and 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 how's your wife's business? I remember your wife had this. Uh, you know, like was it skin and, and so so body bath and body? Bath and body. Kind of. It's going well, man. We moved out. Look, here's what happened. Right before COVID, we moved from Brooklyn mm-hmm. to this little town out in Long Island. It's way out, and it's not the suburbs. It's like the country. It's like the this. You know, this this is my shit, man. Right, 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 right. This your jam. <laughs> You're all in. You've invested. You're all in on it. You're digging it because you got the. You're you got the, out here, man. the trucker hat going. You got the uh, the flannel shirt and the the the, <laughs> you all the jacket in. over it. The chopping jacket. The wood cut. Car know heart, it got a car heart, flannel. It's it's going. Let down. me ask you this, Benny. Do you have truck balls? Have you gone all the way? Are no you, truck you, balls. Okay, no truck balls. that's the but final you know. phase. But you still you still keep the Brooklyn shit around. Oh, know? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but I noticed you didn't pull out of your sock, Benny. You didn't pull that knife out of your sock. It was just right there in plain sight. That's the difference, country style. Yeah, bro- Brooklyn, Brooklyn, you got to keep it close. That's a sock one. Oh, you got to pull out the shorter sock one. All right, I apologize. I take it back. He's all in. He's all in. That's cool. Uh, shit, man. But yeah, we moved out uh, to this uh, little town. And uh, it's by the beach, and I love it, man. It's, it's it's like vineyards and beach. It's not like the Hamptons is in the opposite direction. Okay. We're just in this little area, and it's it's some small town shit, man. And right. I, I love it. And then, but you know, I gotta to go to the city now to do comedy. It's like a, I gotta plan out a lot of yeah, like it was not like I could hop on the F train and go do you know five sets on a Wednesday night or whatever. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Life has changed a lot, you know. Yeah. It's changed a lot for me, man. But you know, it's all good, you know. It's, I mean, you because you was a you were in Brooklyn for years, uh, just you know, yeah. always a city dude. Where'd you grow up initially? In Washington D.C. My dad's from East New York. He moved to from Saratoga and Pitkin Avenue. Mm-hmm. He moved to D.C. Uh, you know, that's where I grew up. And then you know, I moved to New York, and mm-hmm. I, I stayed in the city a little bit. I was in the Bronx. Times Square, and then I ended up back in Brooklyn, and I and I the majority of the this is like ninety four, yeah, so yeah. probably since about ninety four I've been in Brooklyn, and then you know these last two years right before COVID out out here in the in the you know 
It's it's something else, man. It's, 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 it's how do you how do you like how do you like do you like it or or I love it. I love it, man. I mean, I love. The, I got kind of burnt out, you know. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I I kind of felt as though you were kind of edgy, like you were you were you know you had enough of it, you know. I mean, even your comedy was about people annoying you in parking spots <laughs> and, and stuff, you know. So you know that that kind of becomes the thing. Yeah, man, I just got I got a little burnt out. You know, I got sick of you know cars getting broken into and this and that and just constant shit. And uh, you know, I love Brooklyn. I always love Brooklyn, but I like now. So now I go visit it. You know, I come I come back to the city. I spend a weekend. I do some shows, and then I come back here. It's quiet. I can go right. in the backyard. I can go out there with the dog. I right, can, right, right. You know, go to the beach. Jump. I, I'm ten minutes from the beach. I can go jump in the water. As soon as it gets warm. Boom, I go jump in the water every morning. Right. It's nice. It's I love it, man. Yeah, decompress a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And, and I know you were you were helping your wife with um with her business, the bed and body works and stuff like that. She was making her own stuff. And uh, you know, I always I always think about that and I always think about how you uh you know were involved in it in a way, uh in a protective way of her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's a, it's, you know, uh, the last thing I thought I would be doing, I'm the shipping department. Right, right, right. My business. But the last thing I thought I'd be doing is be working with bath and body stuff or whatever. But it's, you know, it's my wife. She makes good stuff. Mm -hmm. There was a point in Brooklyn, we were doing it out of Brooklyn, where I was, she has this stuff called butter all over. Right, right, right. It's the best moisturizer ever that, it, you know, this shit is unbelievable. Right. And people get addicted to it like crack. People love this stuff. So right, right. I remember there was a point where it was like one jar left because we were all out of it. And she was like, look, this lady's coming in a Subaru Outback. Just go. We don't want her to know where we are because she's a little kooky in the head. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. go wait out on the corner and she's going to come pick it up. She's going <laughs> to short you the money. Don't let her short you the money or whatever. And I'm out there like a fucking crack dealer like with a drug dealer all over in my jacket, you know, yeah. <laughs> going she to showed up with somebody office. else. You're like, I thought you were coming alone. What is <laughs> what's this about? <laughs> and the ladies trying to short me, you know, give me thirty dollars or whatever. It's just it's crazy. But, you know, it's you're you're with somebody. You're all in. You you know, she has always had my back with comedy all these years. And then she launched this thing and we got to, you know, I, I help out. I never thought that that's something I would be doing, but here I am. I'm doing it, and uh, right, right. it's all good, man. It's all good. How is the business doing? Is it is it to the point where y'all are still stuck and win, or is it to the point where it's it's got a little off the off the runway? It's good. It's off the runway. You know, she she had a what do you call a West Elm picked up her stuff, and then a lot a bunch of big stores, mm -hmm. and then now she does most of it's online. Mm -hmm. So most of it's on. She has a brick and mortar near here in a in a town called Greenport. Okay. You know? And uh, but the, the the majority of it's online. So you know, just she makes it. She has she has people make candles. This that boom, pack it up, ship it out. It's yeah. uh, it's good, man. It's good. I mean, that's where you know you've got to. Uh, we're at that age where it's just like. I'm not a young dude anymore running around in these clubs. Right, um, right. You know, I'm sort of keeping an eye on how I'm going to retire. Right, and right. How I'm going to be comfortable mm -hmm. and how right. I'm not going to be sitting there full of regrets because right. Comedy Central didn't give me a, <laughs> another yeah. special or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's an interesting too now because it's like, it's kind of like you said that everything is online. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, the pandemic really kind of changed the dynamic of everything. I mean, even when it comes to, to acting and stuff like that right now, is one of the things I was, I was, I was uh, having a discussion with uh, uh, a couple of act, a couple of black actors that I know. And so at a, there was a time when when acting itself was black or Latino was a genre yeah. of that if you have black people in it, it's a black film and it's a genre. And now because of the because of the fact that um there's so many streaming outlets that 
nothing you do matters. And I mean, not that it doesn't matter. It matters in terms of you building your fan base, but it's almost like the thing that you and I grew up with came up in the business where like be funny and then they'll find out that you're funny and then, and then they'll give you the special and then this and that, and that's all done. Everything is online. Everything is social media, but also what you find is because things are so spread out in terms of so many streaming, uh, streaming opportunities. Um, now just having a black movie is, so now you have black movies who are horror films and romantic comedies and this and that, they're just because of the need of the content. And it's so not it's just new Jack city over and over again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and so it gives you, and I was just wondering if, um, you know, so even this, even the, uh, you know, the body butter and stuff like that literally could make you, you know, you can end up like making hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're producing and you're pushing it and you have a good product and you're reaching the people and they're, they're into it. It's, you know, it's a, it's a solely different thing, you know, whereas the frustration of comedy, I don't know if it's there as much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, for me, here's the beauty of it. Here's the beauty of it. It's like all this stuff is related. It, 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 it's now because of us coming together, working on this kind of side business. You know, I just have the ability to say no to the shit gigs that right. I do not have the ability. You know, you got to pay the rent. You got right. You don't got to go to Rod. You ain't got to do Roger Paul's gig. Right. Two hundred dollars <laughs> up in fucking Philly you know, and bring a over. middle. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean, or whatever the hell it is. You know, it's yeah. like it, it, I'm able to do that. I'm able to be more selective, uh, and uh, and 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 really, the business really has changged in the in the, in the auditioning process. Like I sure. can audition from here, man. Right, I love right. everything is the self tape now. I love that, man. I hate going to those rooms. I hate going and auditioning in those rooms. I get nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, I forget stuff. You know, the, you have to deal with cats and directors, personalities and all that kind of stuff. But, dude, from here, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'll sit down in my living room and put, the, you know, bam. And, and I'm like, I don't like this. Set thing. up set up your ring light and do it as many the times ring, as you, you want to do it. Right here, <laughs> you yeah. know, whatever. And uh, uh, I think it's, it's certainly I'm better suited for that. Yeah, yeah. And it's worked better. You know, it's worked better. I've got little things here and there going because of just being able to not be in that room uh, uh, with those casting directors. I, yeah. I, I used to be the thing to do, but I'd rather not. You know, yeah, I'm like, yeah. if they like it, they like it. Here it is. Take a look. Bam. You know? Now, he, here's the thing. How long you been married now? 26 years. Wow. 26 years. That's yeah. crazy. That's <laughs> I know. crazy. I, I know. Um, what have you, what have you, okay, so because of the fact that it's, you're not, you know, I mean, there was so much time that we spent running out in the street, running in the yeah. streets. So, you know, we weren't around. A lot of times you weren't around your mate. Now you're around your mate all the time. I mean, you, you don't need, <clears throat> I mean, you can't even go, oh, I got to go to the city you don't for even an get audition. That <laughs> yeah, you don't get that breather if you need it. <laughs> you know, um, what have you learned from that, would you say? You know, it's it. What I've learned from it is that's the great make or break. That if if you cannot spend time with your mate, I mean, and I'm talking about time. I'm talking yeah. about spending times like doing time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, if you you got a you got a cellmate, and if right. you don't get along with your cellmate, you know your roommate, your wife, or whatever, then it's going to show, and right. then it's all going to go down the shitter. Right. Fortunately. We get along very well. We like the same shit. We, you know, uh, the, the sex is good for, for it's, it's better than it's ever been. Wow. I don't know if this is the place to talk about it, but this is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the place to talk about it. Man, I mean, and I never would have thought that, but, right. you know, we, we upped our game in that department. And then it's like you but, fine tune the shit where it's like, okay, I'm going to watch uh, this show Top Boy on netflix you're not gonna like that so you probably want to go watch whatever you watch up there yeah it works out you know, yeah. you know right, right. i'm gonna go you know i'm gonna go hang out with my friends here you're gonna go hang out with your friends here and uh you just you just make why do you think couple why do you think the sex is better now 
or what because what changed it's got it like down to a like it's it's like cooking man like <laughs> he knows exactly what i like what she cooks mm. and i know what she likes and we know all the spots yeah. and we know what we don't like and right. we can be honest about it like right. if this shit's not working this the tongue game or whatever is not working to get yeah, yeah. or whatever it is. Right, right, right. Left. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt right. after this, you know, or, or, or after uh, 26 years. How, how long did it take for you to get to the point where you start? I mean, because let's, I mean, to be honest, um, you could always have gotten to this. The problem is, I think that we're afraid to be honest about uh, just to be honest, just to be who we are. Because we don't want to be, we don't want to, we don't want to lose the person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that once you feel you've solidified your relationship, you've mm -hmm. solidified that you can be honest, be honest enough where it's like, you know, look, if, if, uh, if, if stuff is not working that day and you got to tap out, it's not the end of the world. It's not the, right, right, right. The, uh, uh, this never happens, whatever that kind right. of, you know, what I mean? right, 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 right. Uh, uh, it's, it's like, you kind of, you adjust and you move and you, I, I don't know. It's kind of like friendships, man. It's kind of like friendships where as you grow, I have a hard time making friends now because I tolerate so much less bullshit and I meet somebody and, and we're, I'm like, okay, these, we could hang out. We got some similar interests, boom, boom, boom. And then they'll do something fucked up. And I'm like, you know, I don't even want to work through that. Right, right. I'm here. I'm I'm 54 years old. I don't have time for all that. You know. Now now is it that you don't want to work through it or or is it So because I have that same problem where I I'll be like, "Oh, this guy might be a oh, I might have a new friend and then they'll do something." But I think what 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 makes me not want to because it's not just working through the thing it's that the thing is a subtext for something else like it's a it's a red flag that that leads into something else so um if somebody disappoints you yeah. up top, they're gonna disappoint you again in a much bigger way yeah and, and uh, the, the three of us being in this kind of business yeah have, have, have had a lifetime of disappointments right right uh, and i'm like i don't need to add to that uh, I've, I've got an armada of disappointments right. you know right. i don't i don't want to add to that shit you know yeah. uh, surprise me with some positivity yeah yeah Bring something to the table you know yeah. what i mean but this little shit you know that you're doing now later on is going to you're going to do it again this is right, just right, right. who you are and and i think that there's a reasonable i mean i think we're reasonable about but i think that even on the you know when people are dating they put their best foot forward and a lot yeah. of times in friendships they don't they're like yo this is what i am whatever whatever you tell me you're going to call me you don't call me whatever and or and it, and it seems like you know, then what you get is this thing. Oh man, I didn't know you you were this sensitive. And it's not that I'm sensitive. It's that I have a specific standard that I want to operate on and that I expect of people. There's a certain way that I I expect people to treat me and so on and so forth. I had a um. Also, your uh, time is precious. Yeah, your yeah. time. You realize like how valuable time is, especially as you get older. You get less and less of it. Well, I, you know, I say all the time that that I've seen more sunsets than I'm gonna see. Yeah, and, and I'm not I'm not willing to waste them on you. If that you're <laughs> I don't not got if, time for your boring stories. Yeah. I don't got time for your nonsense. Watch shitty shows, ironic movies. I don't got time anymore. I mean, I mean, I, I just didn't. And I think just I think there was a time as I got older, I felt like. Um, uh, I'm not going to, I got to the point where I was like, I'm not going to deal with people who I feel like take away from my, uh, my, it's always difficult. It's always yeah. difficult to be your friend, somebody to, uh, that, of course I'm with you. It costs me a meal. It costs me time. It costs me energy. It costs me aggravation. And so I, I, Thought, you know, but then you you kind of feel an obligation because the person is giving you energy, so you feel that that's so you don't want to you don't want to be a, a dick where you just shut it down, 
And and then I got a little older, and then I was like, not only am I not going to deal with people who don't who don't add to, just if they add to my life, that's one thing. But also if they add to my life, if they're not. If uh, they don't add to your life. If, if even they're even not if, adding something to your life, you cut right, them out. Uh, well, yeah. I, I was going to say was that even if it's it's neutral, if you're in my life and you don't, even if it's not a problem, like even if it's. It's okay. I get rid of those too because because of the you know the whole thing of having more sunsets, seeing more sunsets. Then I so wasting time is at this age. Sometimes Dante, you could see I could see a visual clock over his head as someone's telling him a boring story. And the stopwatch <laughs> starts going. I go, oh my god, you got like ten <laughs> seconds to say something interesting because he is gonna tune out. <laughs> This is a I, shot I, clock. Jante has a 24 second <laughs> shot clock above him. Every conversation he has. <laughs> and then when he, and if you don't say anything interesting, they blow the whistle and there's shot clock violation. Just give up the ball. You got to give up the ball. Yeah. You know, also, man, you know, uh, uh, right around, it wasn't this past year, but kind of the year before I had some health issues that came out of nowhere. Okay. Right. And that stuff, that stuff puts everything in perspective, which, you know, I know you had some shit yeah, yeah. way back. You're in the, you're in the intensive care. Yeah. And you're like, you're, you're like, I'm shaking the rug. If I get out of here, yeah, yeah. If I make it through this. I'm shaking a rug. All yeah. the riprap is going, yeah. you know, yeah. all the takers are going. Yeah. And there's no reason. But I don't even, I don't even give the neutral <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like even the ones, okay, you don't take nothing, but you don't add it. If I'm not excited about seeing you, it's one, I mean, you and I have always had a really good relationship where it was, I mean, we, we've never been like close, close, but it's always like when I see you, it's like, oh, you know, like it's, you get that, that feeling, oh, this is going to be cool. You know what I mean? There's going to be laughs and, huh? It's always good. It's always good, yeah. man. I, you know, you, you say some shit that's going to make me laugh. It's not like you're trying to suck information from me. <laughs> It's not 20 who books that, who books that, who books that. Can you put in? It's not. I'll do it. But you know what I mean? It's not that. It's just we're going to have a conversation. Yeah. It's going to be good. You got your own shit going on. Yeah. That, you know, I can see. I'll say, you know, I see you. I see you in stuff all the time. Right, right. You know, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and you got your opinions. And we don't have to. We don't agree on everything, you know. Right. <laughs> and uh, but I like that. You know, I like it. Yeah, yeah. You're an original, you know. No, I appreciate you. that. And I think the same thing about you, but I think it also, I mean, but it, it's like when you have a wife where they bring, like, I, you know, I have this, uh, I had a young lady give me the finger, I was dating <laughs> her, and I was like, don't do that. And they was like, well, you were teasing me. I go, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't give you the finger. And she was like, well, why are you being so, sad? I go, don't give me the finger. Like, I don't, I don't curse at you. I don't want you because there's never a situation like I'm still do the consultations. There's never a situation where somebody's doing that and it doesn't get worse. It always gets worse. Yeah. The, 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 even if it's even if it's playful and it, it just always gets worse. So I, I have no problem. Like I say, I, I, I'll, I could be out of this relationship yesterday. We could stop doing this yesterday if you don't want to do in it heat mode you're always yeah. in heat mode where you're ready to leave that that movie what was that line in the movie heat where you're like, oh yeah you gotta, got, you you gotta be able to leave <laughs> in 60 oh, seconds. Mode, <laughs> you pick up a bag and leave yeah um do you say you got to treat a relationship like a bank robbery <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean i think but you get to the you're, you're so right that you get to the point where you know like you guys have both been in the relationship for so long that it's like you're not afraid of okay if i if i say that i mean and the bottom line is if if we change and we don't get along we probably shouldn't be together anyway like let's 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 figure how to split this up and go our separate ways and be happy anyway i i but i think people are so insecure about what their personal value is that they don't want to they don't want to be honest about what they really like or they don't like or what's a problem or what's not a problem, and they're holding back. And and that never goes away ever. If it's a problem now, it'll be a problem later. And if you can't come to some kind of some kind of a, a, a compromise in that, it's also okay. It's okay. 
you yeah, know, you got to be, you know, he, here's this thing that I've been dealing with lately that I think, I, I think you might be interested in this because okay. I give people this and they get, uh, so, so my dad, okay, my mom died about, God, nine years ago, something like that. My dad, you know, every night lit a candle. You know, he took care of her. She got Alzheimer's and all this. Mm-hmm. This shit's not funny, but whatever. Right, 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 right. But, no, where no, but it's real. So, so then it was like, all right, Pop, you know, you want to start dating and this kind of stuff. You know, he's 80, he was 80 something at the time. Right, right. Tried, he tried dating online on fucking J date. And he's mm. like, everybody looks like Philip Seymour Hoffman. He doesn't do <laughs> anything. It's like, you know, they're all. They're all like, yeah, you got a car. You don't have a car, whatever. So 86 years old, this girl he knew, this younger woman that he knew from way, way back, Mm -hmm. okay, popped up. And now they're living together. How much younger? 49, dude. She's 49. He's 86. She's 49. He's not not a rich man. He's not a, he's a, you know, whatever. So he's just an artist. He paints. She's so I'm like, it's it's been hard for me to accept that and to be like, I don't you know, to, are there ulterior motives? Like what what the deal is? It's a hard it's it's such a change of of life, man, to to have that shit happen. I don't I don't I figured this might be a place to talk about it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great. Well, well, here's a, here's something interesting. I have uh, so I have I, I have three older sisters. Yeah. One of my sisters is married. Uh, well, two of my sisters is married. One is probably late seventies. Um, she's got a younger dude. My but my middle sister uh, was living with me in the house. She literally just moved out um, because we're getting ready to sell the house and we have to partition it because the house is everybody has a portion of the house, and so we're trying to straighten that out. But what? What's interesting about this, and this is this is really interesting, and and you know when I say this to women, is your value as a man goes up as you get older. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna pull a twenty year old with a fat booty swinging on a pole, although you might, you <laughs> might. But when you really start to oh like, uh, so let me. Let me rewind. So my sister, when she was in this, she was like 70, 72. She had this guy who was a bus driver. He was getting ready to, he was getting ready to, um, maybe a little older than that, maybe 60 something. He was going to retire. He was a little older. He was driving a New York City bus. He was going to retire. They were going to get a house and move down south to North Carolina. Now, my middle sister is a cunt. Like, uh, she is... Like, she moved out of this house. I probably will never see her again. Uh, and I mean, mm-hmm. not even on the funeral. I'm not going to the funeral. Just a nasty person, just always taking, always abusive, always. And every time I've tried to maintain, have some kind of relationship, with, always oversteps her boundaries. And, and, uh, so but, you guys don't get along. Is what right. We just, right. but she's also just a horrible person. And yeah. she's always been selfish and horrible and stuff but what happens is she was a hottie when she was younger and so you know what happens is you you're a hottie when you're young and then you realize nobody gives a fuck about like you nobody's buying no 50 year old pussy no nobody's getting a corolla with three hundred thousand miles on it nobody's buying that they don't and you you can't demand the a price for that and so even at four, you talk about she's 49 years old. Like, for instance, my sister, this guy was like, he was one of those guys that repeated the same story over again, and they used to argue and fight. But but after he he he, he uh, retired, then he um, they were dating, and then she was like, well, what are you, she was trying to pressure him to get married and all, and he dumped her, right? And then I watched from 60s to maybe the last 10 to 12 years, she's alone. Her 60s or the 1960s? She maybe? was in six, she was 60 years old, yeah. 60 something years old, and she's getting older. And so what you what you don't understand is, and we see this over and over again, women are dying alone. They are dying alone. First of all, we 
die first. Yeah. Men die. We 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 die earlier, but we that's across the board. So a lot of times when you go in these senior citizens' homes, the reason why they have these huge, you know, they have these huge STD yeah, epidemics yeah. because they're sharing men. And the reason why they're sharing men, because your dad, who's an artist, first of all, he's an artist, so that's kind of cool. Like, he's kind of a creative and a kind of a worldly dude. You know what I mean? He is a commodity. Um, and women don't want to be alone. I mean, all of, the, all of the, 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 the things that we look at when young women are young and, oh, I'm this, I'm that, I got my penis. Nobody gives a fuck. When you're getting your go, like my the dude my sister was dating was absolutely Im verbally abusive. I mean, she is too, but he's verbally. She would she would sign up for that in a minute, right yeah. now, because now she was in this house and she was literally getting her laundry done and talking to the laundry guy or getting the groceries delivered just so she can have, cause I wasn't talking to her, I'm done talking to her. So yeah. she has no friends, there's no opportunities. And then when you, you start to realize that just the, the, the camaraderie of just having human connection with no one somebody. No wants to be alone. No, no. people don't want to be alone. Nobody wants that. And you know what's interesting that you mentioned, I, I, I don't know if all this shit's supposed to be funny or whatever, but it's, it, there seems to be an epidemic of deterioration of families where it's like everybody I talk like I got someone I got a brother I don't speak to in my family. Right. He doesn't speak to my dad. One of the one of the brothers. But I never grew up like that. I never thought that was going to happen. Right. Right. You right. said you got a sister you don't speak. It seems right. like there's an epidemic of that shit. Well, I got two sisters that I don't speak to. But you don't, you don't speak. To yeah. Them. But but um, would just but a lot of it had to do with the fact that. They were th their behavior that their, their neg that negative behavior was coddled by my parents. So they've always been cunty and bitches and whatever. And nobody ever said my parents never said this is inappropriate behavior. I, I you cannot act this way. And so yeah. this is so they've been able to get away with it with me and bit of and then, you know when they're attractive and everybody's trying to fuck them you know they they're getting away with it and guys don't care they'll tell you whatever they want to tell you to to get in your drawers and then all of a sudden then you become well, you know gravity hits and you start the thing that we were chasing which is that little tight body and them titties and that little fat booty is sagging and and now you got to have a personality yeah you got yeah. And that's something we're working on all the time. I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. No, just good time to be funny. Good time yeah. if everything is going south to, to be funny and nice. Be Get nice or thoughtful or charming, or interesting. Charming, interesting. And so when you say your dad's an artist, you don't, you don't have to develop when you're just hot, you know, and you got, you know, when you have the market geared towards you, right? And just guys are just flaunting, they're throwing themselves at you. You don't have to develop a skill to be interesting for survival purposes. And then you get caught suddenly, you know, you're 60 and you got no survival skills. And then and then chivalry is dead because women killed it. Like this is you wanted this level of I mean, you want this equality. So the equality is OK. Now you got to split the bill. Or you got to be as interesting as I as, as I am. Or or so now when you're you know it's it's a weird thing. I get so many so many um, consultations with guys our age, yeah. and he's in a marriage that he's miserable in, right? And he he's like, oh, I can't, you know, I, I, it's been so long. I mean, what else am I gonna do? And I'm like, dude, dog, you have no idea that you are a fucking commodity right now, like. A, a, a dude like you, mixed gray beard, comedy, funny, interesting. Do, you know what I'm, I'm You also have a, a level of resources um, because you've been accumulated, because you can't be a bum. Like, we would date a chick from, that's on the fry, doing fries at the White Castle because she's hot. But you and I can't do, even if we're hot, you can't do that. You still, there's got to be more to you than just that. And, and and it's really kind of interesting because I think society is dishonest with women about, but just the way you're the commodity on the front end, you are not the commodity on the back end. You Men are the commodity. I'm, I'm, I can't tell you how many times I I've dated I, 
I think part of that, though, too, Dante, is it's not it's society. I think women as a whole, they set up a system where for themselves, if it doesn't work, they move the goal marker of what what should work. So if they somebody breaks up with a, a woman, it's like, well, you're too independent. He didn't like that. You're too powerful, independent, blah, 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 no, whatever. You were just, you were just but, a bitch. Like, right. You just, it may not be that at all. Yeah it's, yeah, it's really. Not, now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I understand that there's men like when you look at this Kanye yeah. shit where yeah. somebody's he's just a fucking clown who was raised by his mama. So he's got really a lot of bitch energy. And mm. so what he's doing you know, with all the money and the, I'm a genius and I'm a I'm a voice of a generation. But you're still a clown. You're like, how do you think that your response to this is is attractive in any way, shape, or form? Is that the Uber? I don't know. <laughs> That'll break up a podcast quick. Yeah. <laughs> the Uber eats arrives. Uh, I'll send it to you. Are you still trying to? Hold on, hold on. Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay. Yeah, hold on. All right, one Thank second. Um, I'm going to send you the link. Can you pick it up? It's like seven minutes away. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but there's a, there's a, there's this, this level well, of, 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 I, I think we're dishonest. So, yeah. I mean, you why women go, well, I, I, I get it, man. I get, you know, you're 50 years old, you're 30, 40 pounds overweight, which is, look, I'm not, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm in the worst shape that I've ever been in my life. But the difference is that there's more to me than just that. There's always been more. I, I mean, years ago, I was dating younger girls, and I remember specifically, I was dating this girl. She was a stripper. I'm like 26 years old. She had a BMW, and uh she lived in the bronx well i don't know why you would have a bmw and you're living in a project or whatever but every day they would steal Some her people mi- can't move they, out of the project they would so steal they- her mirrors they would steal the mirrors right um not the whole mirror but the inside of the mirror because you could get yeah. like 75 to 100 bucks per mirror so the guys were stealing so i had a guy who who would put the metal metal racks around the mirrors so you couldn't take the mirrors out right so she was like, you know, they keep stealing my mirrors. I go, listen, go see my man Pedro. He's here's the address. I already spoke to him. Da 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 da. Get this. And then she never lost the mirror again. So it's like, when you're a fifty year old guy, you know a guy. Yeah. You, you got a guy, and if you don't got a guy, you know you can call who me. Who knows a guy? You know me, who knows a guy who's got a guy for what? Yo, let me ask you something. Can you? No, you know, the roof is leaking. The plumbing is. You, you, if you don't do it yourself, you got a guy, and those resources are are comforting when when those tragedies happen. Where a twenty year old dude, he don't got a guy. No, he doesn't know. He better be handy. Yeah. You better be real handy. Yeah. Better and they're it. not. And they're not. And if you if you got a six pack and you doing pull ups in the park every day, you're probably not handy. You <laughs> you you don't have the resources. And then because you're hot, every every uh, every everybody in the club is trying to fuck you anyway. Yeah. So you so you're you dishonest, yeah. disloyal, and you don't got no resources. Go ahead, Harry. You I wanted to something? go back to the Kanye West thing about that for a second because we, we went by that because that's that's just a crazy story in general of just that behavior that you're allowed to get away with because mm. you're famous but it's stalking behavior like it's just it's crazy insanity and not being able to let it go and he does have i guess he does have uh you know medical issues for sure but there also comes a time where you have to take responsibility as well look yeah there's medical issues but you, what you're talking about is a dude who's a clown. You're a clown. Yeah, I get you. You're, you're just a clown. If you're responding in these ways to somebody not wanting to be around you, you're a clown. Like if you if you're if you're going oh you uh, somebody that's going through somebody else's phone or somebody that's the GPS and you ch- chase like you're what you're saying is my. My value is not enough to keep you. What I have to offer is not enough, and that's one of the things that you, you, um, you deal with on a on a on a on a on a real basis. Where when you are 
a, a guy who you know who has established himself as a as a man in life just you know you you literally feel like you have value like you bring value like even when you talk about your you know when you're talking about dealing with your wife's business like what's a 25 year old dude with a six pack like what do, do you understand what i'm saying like i bless the man god but you know i think back to the, the one thing with the kanye thing is also you got to look at the fact that there's a track record of you know when you act crazy it ends up in the news it makes you money yeah. it, 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 it's your brand so you're really mar it's really marketing you know it keeps you in the news it keeps yeah. you like like trump you know, yeah. you do shit, and it's just I, I don't. I, I'm not a. I'm not a fan of all that. But that's that's a lot of what that that can potentially be. But yeah, as you as you are a man in life, as you get older, you get knowledge, you get experiences. You know, I mean, I fix shit, man. I'm 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 I'm, I'm plumb, doing plumbing stuff. I'm doing floors. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know. Right uh stuff i never thought i would do but like right. my dad showed me some some stuff when i was younger i know a little bit here there's youtube right uh, that's the thing well, anything you want to learn you could just you all you got to do is google youtube and and step by step say okay this this that and the other you know and if you got if you got a few dollars in the pocket you can buy the tool that makes it easy to do you know you can you can you can do the things i i remember um I was uh I had a leaky a leaky sink, kitchen sink. So you know how you the the the, the drain you screws into the into the bottom of the sink and the pipe it screws into it. But there's a tool that go there's like a fork. Yeah. That goes in the sink that you turn that it it's like almost like an Allen wrench but with a fork in it that if you don't have that tool you can't fix the sink you you know what i mean it's fundamentally but you gotta you gotta actually you gotta do the research you find gotta out. do the research you gotta do you gotta have the patience to to even want to do that I, I, but i think what's happening now is you know and and, and don't get me wrong i mean i, I don't want to act like i'm a, i'm some kind of cad like i don't understand you know the abuse and the sexual abuse and the me too and all this i i, I totally understand that men wild the fuck out way beyond what they should have i mean i i'm, I'm mortified i mean I, I was watching the anita hill uh the anita hill clarence thomas uh thing and it's like it's cringeworthy yeah the, the yeah. questions that so we we understand that the but still the there's an overcorrection for the under correction you 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 we we things were so bad that there's and then there's an over correction and now you got women who instantly say men have men have no value they that da, 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 da. but you're the one that has no value you you no. your, your booty ain't that fat no more your prick titties ain't that perky so what else is going on what else do you have to offer i didn't mean to cut you off now you know i was just gonna say to append to that like uh, i was talking to my other brother my, my brother that I'm tight with and uh, he's out in Los Angeles right and he's uh, uh, he designs cars and, and urban living situations nice. oh, okay. right. he just did this uh, this kind of a, he got hired by this company to do this kind of uh, sort of a tiny house on wheels okay right? uh, so he's in this company and it's like everything's all politically correct and this and that and he gets to kind of now he's at a point where he's like hiring people to work for him so he hires a lot of women to work for him mm -hmm. you know as my gay brother he hires right, a lot right. of women to work for him he has a good rapport with them right right uh and and it's a it's like a frat boy environment right, right? right. hires a lot of women this shit happens this is unbelievable so uh uh they have a, the communication there is mostly through texting you know so there's there's a girl there that's kind of working for him that's very ambitious mm -hmm. and uh he texts her something they go back and forth and then he texts her something he says you know what i don't want because this is a text because it's not written the tone might be off so let's have an actual conversation a right, face -to -face conversation right so she, uh she complains 
to the owner of, of the company that he's tone policing. She said that you're tone, tone policing. policing. You're to which I've never heard before. This is some No, this is the first one I've heard. First okay. time I've heard this. Tone policing. He ends up getting fired and she ends up getting her job. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, which is that was on her list. You know, she wanted his job. Right, right. And, and he's and she was like, you know, he's being sexist. He's being this. He's being that. He's the one who hired her. He hired right. all the women in the company right, right, within, right. A, within a frat boy kind of environment, a bro right, right. environment. And then there's this tone policing shit where he's right. like, let's just have a conversation. So this isn't out of context. But that's the fucking world we live in, man. That's like it's like on comedy. It's on it's on everything. You It's like you have to overcorrect yourself to the point where you cannot say anything, no matter what. You're not judged by your actions, by right. what your track record is, by what, you know, your your standard of of uh, what you've created. You know, as yeah. a comedian, you've created funny shit. Right. But a little fucking tone policing text. And it's yeah. like, I'm sure you probably talk about this. But how, how long ago was that? How long ago was that? This is happened. a week. A week ago. Yeah. Wow. Cause, yeah. Um, this uh, we got because we're gonna do something behind the Patreon if you don't mind. So we're gonna stop it. Anything you want to plug? Social media? Anything you want to plug? Uh, uh, yeah. Let me uh, let me plug. Okay. So real DC Benny on Instagram. Okay. And I'm on this new Amy Schumer show. The the um uh the Life and Beth on Hulu. Dope. Dope. Um, dope. 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 And, and um, then there's a special on YouTube, free. They can watch the free special on YouTube. Uh, nice. Drift and Predicaments, the, the Bill Burr company that produced it. So, oh, dope, dope. Those things, man. Okay. Harry, talk to me. Uh, just all my stuff is uh, at Harry Terjani. That's it. All my social media, follow my YouTube stuff, TikTok, the whole thing. Uh, Y'all know how to get me. Google me. You know all the social media. GYBB, get your pulse back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. Don't forget, if y'all want a one-on-one -on -one consultation, you can hit me at DanteNimmer.com. Click on consult, and you can book time with me. Um, I love y'all. We're going to go to the Patreon side. And if uh, if y'all could uh, support us, if you like what we're doing, support us on the Patreon. It really helps us to keep doing this. Um, it's uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. Um, love y'all. We out.